Okay, guys. Hello. Good evening to every one of you. Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you very much for being here and being here on time. I appreciate that. Um. Well, okay. So it's a new day, something new to learn, and we're going to start for today. It's a pleasure once again to be here. And well, today um, I want you to have, first of all, we're going to have a little practice before we start today. So I need you guys to every one of you to have pen or pencil with you. Or if you're using your phone and you want to use your notes, you can do it as well. Either pen or pencil or the notes on your phone. Okay. So why? We're going to have, as I said, an activity. And in this activity, uh, we're going to try to practice what we have seen these uh, past few days. Okay, which is about the infinitives and the gerunds. But we're going, uh, we're going to wait probably just one more minute for the other ones to connect. Because otherwise, they will not know what we're going to be doing, okay? So let's just wait one minute for the others to connect so we can give them all the chance to participate in this activity. Teacher, um, I guess I need help in the first and the first knowledge check. Mm -hmm. I, I only could answer three exercises. Three uh, exercises. Okay. Yeah, the 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 other three exercises, um, uh, I done. You couldn't. I couldn't, I couldn't, and I don't understand. Okay, all right, so... Um, Me too, teacher. <laughs> okay, no problem, that's okay. Uh, what we can do is that, as I told you before, you can go ahead and send me a text message on the group so I can know which exercises you will need help with. Because otherwise... Or, or right here, I won't be able to give you like the answers at like here on the class. But if you text me directly, um, I can help you with that, okay? So do that after the class or um, or tomorrow morning, something like that, so we can, uh, we can help you out, okay? So for the ones that just connected, welcome. And um, if you're still not home yet and we're going to have an activity, and this activity, we're going to try to verify your knowledge regarding to infinitives and gerunds. So I want you all to have either pen or paper with you. If you are not home, but you are listening to the class, I need you to use your phone like the notes of the phone. Okay, we're going to have an activity, and I need you to send me proof of that later on, okay? understood for everyone yes okay so is everyone ready that's the first question because we're going to start now then do you all have pen and paper with you or a notebook or your phone ready to write the answers Well, I'm going to take your silence as a yes, okay? So what are we going to do? Let me explain you first so we can all understand it. Um, I will, first of all, I will spell a bird for you. It's going to be, um, oh, I see. I got it. Okay, I see it. Alrighty. So I'm going to spell a bird for you. Then I need you to write the letter I. I'm sorry, the letter I, yeah, the letter I for infinitive, the letter G for gerund, or the letter B as in boy for both, okay? Next to the verb. I needed to write it down. Next to the verb, uh, either a letter I, letter G, or letter B, depending on your knowledge, okay? Depending on what you remember about the class. And then 
Next to that, I need you to create one sentence. We are only going to do three, okay? So that is not going to take too much of the time because we have uh, another topic for today. But I need you to tell me if we all understood what we're going to do. Uh, yes. Okay. So I hope everyone is ready. I can still see some people connecting to the class. So, uh, well, probably they will not understand. So let me explain you really quick, quick once again. We're going to have a practice. We're going to have three verbs. I'm going to spell three of them. Then once I spell it, you write next to the verb either letter I for infinitive, letter G for gerund, or letter B for both, okay? I don't need you to go to your notebook or to your notes to check. No, it's going to be here quick and now, okay? Once we finish the first verb, I will give you one minute to create one sentence, okay? Then, so once you create it, we go to the next one, and then we go to the next one. We are only going to have three, and then you send me a picture of what you did on the WhatsApp group, so we can have it as a backup, okay? Good, so we're gonna start, and we're gonna go with the first one. Please pay attention to I, N, T, E, and D. I will repeat it once again. I, N, T, E, N, D. Now, from now, you have one minute to create one sentence. It's not necessary to write down like a big sentence. It can be short. Can you repeat that, uh, the teacher? Can I, I... <laughs> I repeat, please? Okay, I will do it the last time, but this is just going to happen with this verb. I N T E N D. Inter. I don't know. No. I don't know. Write it down. Write it on your notebook or write it on a piece of paper or whatever you're using. Just write it down. And then remember to write I or letter G or letter B, depending if it is an infinitive, gerund, or both. And then, of course, create a sentence. Okay, I think that we had enough time already. So let's go to number two. Number two is going to be, this is going to be an easy one. O-F-F-E-R. I repeat it again, O-F-F-E-R. Please be honest. Don't go to Google to look for an, a sentence. Don't go to Google. Be honest. Just whatever you think or 
the sentence you want to create in your own words, okay? And now we're going to have the last one, which is going to be really easy, actually. Let's go with number three, L-O-V-E, L-O-V-E, L-O-V-E. Okay. So we are 20 on the meeting. So I'm supposed to receive 19 photos on the WhatsApp group. Okay. Because that's why I asked you at the beginning, are you ready? Is everyone having any situation or something? Probably the only one who is not going to send it is going to be either Francisco or Wendy. Because I saw it that they just connected. But the rest of you guys, you were here already. So I need you guys to start send it right now. Okay, now is the moment for you to send it. If you send it later on, I won't take it in consideration. Why? Because then it's it's going to be cheating. Okay, I already received some of you. Okay, it looks like, okay, let's see. What about the others? Don't be cheating, okay? Don't be cheating. I was a student as well, so I know. We all have intentions to go to Google, right? And and try to, you can. No, you have to do it through the WhatsApp group, not here, uh, Debbie. If you are in the WhatsApp group, you should be able to send it. I don't know who is Havernal on the WhatsApp group, but that's okay. Mistakes are always allowed. They help us to improve. That's why we call them mistakes. Okay, I received already Araceli. Let's see, okay, let's see. Okay, I can see. Already, that's good. Looks like we did not really get the idea or we didn't understand the instructions. That's what it looks like. But let's see. I have only received two. What about the others? Yeah, Natalia, if you cannot send them like um, like on the WhatsApp group, that's okay. You can send them through here or like through the chat. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. I'm checking some of your answers in here. Guys, what happened with the others? I have only received three people. What's going on with the others? Okay, I received someone whose name is Era on the... Okay. Okay, that's that's what I wanted. Okay, that's good. Good, excellent. Oh, that's you. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, Era from arriving. Oh, yeah. Kidding. Kidding. Let's see. I love that. Okay. So, guys, if you didn't send it, well, sorry, but I'm only going to take in consideration the one I just received because we're taking more of the time. Okay. All right. Let's see. That's okay. Remember, this is just for us to practice, okay? But I need to see that you're all practicing. Otherwise, I won't be able to see it. I have only received one, two, three, four, five so far out of 20 people in here. Imagine if this was an exam. How much do you think you will get if this one was the exam for you? Only three verbs, three sentences, and your knowledge, pretty much. Um, uh, teacher, mm -hmm. um, maybe someone classmate. Um, mm -hmm. they couldn't get it. The what? information or instructions. Yeah, uh, yeah. In the case of I saw Wendy and who else? I guess it was. Um, I saw some of you that that didn't connect right on the time where I was giving the instructions, but the others, the others are not forgiven. Why? Because I saw you were all here. And I ask you, are you ready? And you didn't say anything, so I I took that as a yes. Ricardo, I got yours as well. Okay. Well, so I'm I'm closing. If you didn't send it, that's okay. So I will just take into consideration the one I just got. Okay. So thanks for the ones that send it the uh, the picture or your answers through the WhatsApp group. Thank you for that. And in this case, Wendy and Francisco, I saw that you guys connected a little bit late, but that's okay. You were not here when I gave the instructions. So you are forgiven, okay? That's okay. All right. So we're going to start with today's class. In uh, these past few classes, Today's class is going to be about a little bit of grammar once again. And today I really want you to pay attention to. Otherwise, you will probably get confused. Okay, I'm telling you since now. Pay attention to this. Otherwise, you will get confused. Now, let me, let me start sharing the screen so we can all understand what we're talking about. Can you all see it? Can you see it or no? Uh, no, we can. Uh, now we can. Okay. All right. Let's see. It's still loading for me. I don't know why. Can you see something or it's still black? Oh, okay. Here we go. We, we can see it. Okay. All right. So as it says here, today we're going to talk a little bit about noun clause. Noun clause. What is that? Sounds like difficult. Sounds like weird. Sounds like, oh, I don't know what that is. 
But today we're going to learn how to use that and what is that, okay? So as I told you some minutes ago, please pay attention to this. Otherwise, you will get confused. First of all, we're going to try to go with a definition that we're going to try to have. You see some examples like in general before we go deeper into this. Now, uh, please, Jenny, go ahead and help me reading this part and the first sentence. Okay. What are noun clauses? Noun clauses. Noun clauses. No, clauses. Clauses. Mm -hmm. are noun clauses. A noun clause. Clause, clause. A noun clause. No, clause, clause. no. Clause, yeah. Clause. Mm -hmm. A noun clause is a clause that plays the role of a noun. For example, noun. A noun. noun. For a noun. For example, I like what I see. In this example, this the subject of the clause is bare is no seen. close close the close sorry the subject of the close is bare is see is i is i see bare is see and the verb is see ah, is i and the verb is see okay thank you now let's go with rafael help me with number two I know that patience has limits, has its limits. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In this example, the subject of the clause is patience and the verb is has. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. So today's class, as it says in there, is going to be about noun clauses. Noun clauses. What is that? We have to understand, first of all, in a very easy way. The easiest way for you to understand is a clause is a sentence, okay? It's a sentence that it has subject and verb and sometimes a complement. So that's what we have to understand first of all. Then, of course, we're going to uh, have more examples so we can understand a little bit better. This is just the general idea that we have regarding to noun clauses. Now, we're going to move on, and it's very necessary to know what is a clause. First of all, what is a clause? Let's see. Um, Gwendy, go ahead and help me reading what is a clause. What is a clause? A clause is a group of words that includes a subject and a verb. A subject and a verb. That's it. So here, once you see something like this, that's a clause. Why? Because we have an object and a verb. As it says in here, I like what I see. The underlying part here is the noun clause. But as I'm saying, this is just the general information. We're going to go step by step so we can understand a little bit better. If during the explanation there is something that you do not understand, please, please do not hesitate to ask me, okay? Do not hesitate and ask as many questions as possible. Why? Because this is going to be in your last part of the evaluation, okay? If you don't understand it, of course, you will not know what to do later on. Okay, so let's move on. First of all, it's very important to remember these things. These are the things that we will always have to remember regarding to non-clauses. They are going to be really important and are going to help us to identify them quickly, okay? The first one, a noun clause usually, if not always, start with WH questions. And which are they? We already know them because we saw them before. What, where, why, who or whom, 
when, which, that, and how. Even though these two do not start with the WH question or like the WH letters, we know that they are part of the WH, right? Now, the functions of a noun of noun clauses, which are they? Let's see, let me have um, Daisy helping me reading this part. Functions of noun clauses. Clauses, not, it's that letter U that you pronounce, do not say, because if you say close, then you're saying cerrar, you're not saying clause, okay? Say that again. Functions. Functions. Of, mm -hmm. Functions of noun clauses. Clauses, correct. Mm -hmm. Continue, please. Subject of the sentence. Mm -hmm. Object. Direct. 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 Indirect. Object of the preposition. Okay, thank you. I completely understand, guy, that probably some of you are wondering or like, what is that? I don't remember all those things. Now, let me ask you, do you guys remember about direct and indirect objects? Did you see it in previous models? Or not at all? Or you have no idea at all of what I'm talking about? Be honest, please. About me, I I don't remember anything. I, I understand. I don't remember either. Okay, good. It's good to know. Thanks for your honesty. What about the others? Do you guys remember about direct and indirect objects? Not really, right? Not it's like uh, we learned it or we forgot it. It's like sometimes our body is in the class, but our mind is at the beach, right? Or at the movie or eating or something like that. That happens, I completely understand. I have been in your position and I understand that sometimes we come to the class, we are tired and we really don't pay attention. We look like we're paying attention like this face. Well, it looks like I'm paying attention, but you are not paying attention, actually. So we're going to go with each one of them so we can understand them. Don't worry about it. If you forgot it, today we'll, we'll, we will refresh it, let's say, okay? So you will probably remember what you already forgot. Now, another key, let's say, which is going to be really important to identify and keep this in mind, please. Remember it, write it down. If you have something to write, write it down so you don't have to, for, you don't forget it. In order for you to identify a noun clause in a paragraph or, or in a sentence, how do you do it? Very easy by asking the question, what or who? Those, those two are going to help you, or those are the two questions that we use to identify a noun clause. Remember, what and who? And we will find that out later on, okay? Let's move on. Any questions so far? So far, so good. Are you guys following me? Okay, veo unos rostros de confusión ahí, like, I don't understand what you're saying, but I'm here. All right, let's continue then. If you have questions, please, once again, do not hesitate to ask them. Okay, now let's go. Let's see. We have the first part. A noun clause functioning, in this case, as a subject, because we already uh, saw in the we saw in the previous slide that they can act as a subject, objects, and objects of a preposition. 
So we're going with the first function. The first function is as subject. How so? Let's try to understand it. Now, let's see. I would like to have uh, Philomena's help reading this part right here. Good evening. Good evening. Um, noun clauses. Noun clauses, okay. <laughs> noun clauses can function as a subject of sentence. Of sentences. Uh, subjects of, sentence. of sentences. Subjects, subjects of sentences. Good, excellent. Why, why my pet tor tor toddle? 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 <laughs> toddle? 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 Mm -hmm. Why my pet toddle? Stairs? Stairs. 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 It's so difficult, teacher. Stairs. <laughs> At me all day is beyond me. It's beyond me. Okay. Why, me? why my pet toddle stares at me all day is beyond me. Now, as we can see, this is the easiest part of a non clause. Why? Because automatically, once we see it at the beginning, we see, first of all, we have a WH question. And as you remember in the previous slide, we said that as a noun clause starts with a WH question. Then, what is here the subject? Can someone tell me what is the subject in, in here? The turtle. The pet turtle. All the, the underlying uh, phrase. Sentence? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, of course. All the underline is acting as a subject. But in this one, what is the subject? Turtle. Turtle. Okay, let's do something. Let's do something. Everyone, I need everyone to write your answers on the chat. On the chat of the meeting. Please go ahead, everyone. Because I need to see if you understand it or if you know what a subject is, actually. Let's see. Okay, we have Wendy. Thank you, Toddle, she's saying. Well, we're saying pet Toddle, okay. Alejandro is saying me, okay. It is Toddle. Rafael, my pet Toddle, okay. His pet Toddle, okay. Pet Toddle, okay, good. Okay, I see a lot of people here. Thank you for, for your answers. Okay, what about the others? Please participate, guy. Otherwise, you won't understand. Ricardo is saying me, okay. Nadia Petaro, okay. Yanira Toro, okay. Jenny Toro, okay. Daisy Toro. Okay, not Debbie Pet Tuttle, I guess. Okay, good guess. All right, so now let me tell you that according to the chats that I just read, we only have two people correct. Two, only two of you. What is the answer of that? In this case, in this noun clause acting as subject, because this whole thing is acting as a subject, but it's not a subject itself. Within the noun clause, we have a subject. What is the subject? My pet toddle. My pet toddle. That's the subject. Probably some of you got confused. Because, you know, total. Okay. That's understandable. And we might get confused sometimes. But in this case, my pet total, total, I'm sorry, it's the subject. Now, what is the verb in here? Do not stairs. write it. 
stairs. stairs. And what, what, what's that? What does it mean in Spanish? Mirar uh, fijamente. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. So, as it says here, in the sentence above, the underlying non-clause acts as a single subject. So, it's saying that this whole, this whole sentence is acting as a subject. You see? That's why I told you at the beginning, pay attention, otherwise you will get confused. Now, the millions, one million question right now, or the hundred million dollars question. Are you understanding? So far, mm. so good? Yes, teacher. Okay. I am only listening to one yes. What about the others? Yes. If, you're, if you're not yes, saying, teacher. okay, yeah. <clears throat> good. Because if you're not saying anything, I will take it as a yes. Okay. Now, here, remember, this whole thing is acting as a sentence. It's one subject. This whole thing and this another verb beyond me. So can someone tell me what what does it say in Spanish? ¿Por qué mi mascot, mi, to, mi mascota tortuga me mira fijamente todo el día? Está más, está más allá de mí. Mm -hmm. I think. No, that's that's good. That's really what it says. Now, do we understand now how to identify a noun clause as a subject? Do we know how to identify a, a noun clause as a subject? As I said before, this is the easiest part. Why? Because when a noun clause is acting as a subject, you will see it at the beginning. You see, at the beginning. And that's how you're going to identify it. First of all, by the WH question, why? Then by identifying the subject. And then we see that we have a verb. So automatically we know, oh, okay, this non -cl noun clause is acting as a subject. Why? First of all, is at the beginning, then we easily identified that we have a WH question, we have a subject, we have a verb within the non clause. Okay? Now, do you remember that here in the previous one, we said that these two are going to help us to identify a non clause? I told you, write it down so you don't forget it. So we are going to see that in the next slide. So my question, is the function as subject of noun clauses clear? Or are we still like horchata? It's clear, teacher. It's clear, it's clear teacher. It's clear. Okay. <laughs> I hope so. Okay. I... <laughs> you see, it's it's not clear. Yet. I know you're doing your best. But if you have a question, please ask. Ask. I, I will be glad if you ask any question. Now, let's move on to the next one. Teacher. Yeah. Teacher. Uh, good evening. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. In this case, <clears throat> we use... Why? But it's a sentence or an interrogative a question. Because we are using why. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, uh, I guess that you mean if the whole thing, like together, everything is a question. Why my pet total stares at me all day is beyond me. So, okay. I completely understand the confusion because we know that we use WH questions, of course, to make a question, right? That's why we call them WH questions. That's completely understandable. But in this case, even though we have a WH question, 
Here, we are not necessarily asking a question. It's like a rhetorical question. Um, can be indirect question. Similar to that, yeah, pretty much, yeah. But I need you to understand that this is only part or helping the noun clause to function as a subject. It's not necessarily asking a question to someone. It's like if you are asking yourself a question. You know what I mean? The, the reason. Exactly. Mm -hmm. you under, you, did you understand or did I clarify your question? I'm fine. Thank you, teacher. Okay, okay. That's good. All right, now let's move on to the second function. Now, as everybody said that the function as a subject was clear, and I'm going to take that as clear, we're going to move on to the next one, which is function as a direct object. And now here is where we are going to refresh what you already forgot, because you said that you don't remember a direct object. Now, how do we identify a direct object? We identify them by asking two questions. What or who? That's how we identify a direct object. And those two WH questions are obviously going to help you to identify a noun clause acting or functioning as direct object. And let's find that out. Let's see. Um, I will need Ricardo's help with this part right here. If you wouldn't mind, sir. Um, read teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Function and as direct ob object. Direct. Noun clause, direct, direct object. Okay. Noun clauses can also no. function. Uh, Not clauses, no. clauses. Clauses. Close. No, 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 okay. no, not okay. even close. No, that letter U, that small letter U that you said, you don't have to say. You just have to say C O like claw, clauses. Closes. Exactly. Yes. Like that. Okay, go ahead. No closes. No, okay. you're saying closes. No, it's C L O claw, clauses. Hmm. Go ahead once close. again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, noun closes. Yes. I, I still heard a little you in there, but that's okay. Go ahead. Can also function as a direct direct object. object. Direct. Oh, what happened? I need to I need to read again, teacher, because I couldn't pronounce the words. I forgot it really. That's okay, don't worry, that's <laughs> okay. Object of the bird in the independent club. Independent. Close, independent closes. Close. No. Closes. Closes. Not close. Why? Si decimos close. esa pequeña U, chicos. Si decimos esa pequeña U. Close, esa U, ya estamos diciendo cerrar, ya no estamos diciendo cláusula, ok? So that's yeah. why we have to be careful on the pronunciation. Clause. We have to clause. practice, clause. we have to practice saying clonar, clonar. Yeah, like clause. that, yeah, like, yeah, that's pretty much. Thank you for that. That's a good tip, though. <clears throat> All right, thank you, uh, Ricardo. Now let's see, um, let's have Alejandro Quintanilla. Go ahead, please. Aha, Alejandro, let's see. <clears throat> example, I do not, I do not know what he does, but he always has the best time. Okay, that was good. Okay, thank you. Now, as we sentence, go ahead, yeah, thank you. Go ahead. In the yeah, sentence above, the noun close, mm. close, the noun close, mm -hmm. what it does is acting as the direct object of the verb now. No. Of the verb now. No. Okay, now let's imagine 
that we do not have okay. this underlined. No, 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 I that's okay. No, what the what he does, mm -hmm. but he always has the best time. Okay, thank you. Now let's what imagine let's imagine that oh am I no okay yeah okay so uh let's imagine that this underlined part is not really underlined. Let's imagine. Now, how would we identify it if we wouldn't have the underlined part? How would we identify it? Now, do you remember that I told you that we have two questions, two WH questions that can help us to identify a noun clause? Which are they? What and who? What and who? Now, how would you create a question from these to find out these? Any idea? I is who. I is who, okay. And what is Okay, let me let me let me try to see if you're following me. Are you following me guys or do I need to say this in Spanish? Be honest, please. Uh -huh. I need your honesty right here because I want you first of all to understand what, what I'm saying and second of all to understand the topic. I think Teacher, the last to... part that you sorry. The last part that you saw, that you said, uh, I didn't understand that. Okay. I, I will say only this part in Spanish because I need, I really need you to understand. Okay. ¿Cómo creamos una pregunta de esta misma oración para que esa pregunta nos dé esta respuesta que está subrayada? ¿Se recuerdan que al inicio... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. I don't know if I'm mistaken, but I think it's what I don't know. And the answer is what he does. Excellent. That's what I wanted. You see, she understood. Los demás si saben de dónde salió esa pregunta que ella hizo. Honest, please. Honesty. Yes. Okay. Yes. I don't get it. You didn't get it. Okay. I, I will try to explain it in Spanish though so we can understand. Les dije, imaginémonos que esta parte subrayada y en negrita o, o que está más prominente no está. Imaginémonos que todo está así y que nosotros no sabemos cuál es la noun clause. Entonces viene un examen o alguien nos pregunta. O nos dice, identifíqueme la noun clause en esta oración. ¿Cómo le haría usted para identificarla? ¿O cómo le haría usted para identificar qué función está teniendo esa noun clause? Y es de ahí en donde venimos acá y les dije, recuérdense de estas dos. What and who. Ahora. We go here. Nos imaginamos que esto no está subrayado y queremos saber dónde está la noun clause. Porque no sabemos, esto no está subrayado. Ahora venimos y como sabemos que para encontrar o identificar una noun clause, yo tengo dos WH question que son what and who. Entonces yo vengo y trato de hacer una pregunta y yo digo, who do I not know? Who. Si yo tengo who, yo tendría que tener a una persona. La respuesta de eso me tendría que dar a una persona. Sí, porque es un who, es una persona. Entonces yo automáticamente acá veo que no me está dando una respuesta. Porque ¿a quién no conozco? Entonces aquí no tengo nadie que me diga a alguien o una persona. Entonces automáticamente se me enciende el radar y digo, pero todavía tengo otra que es what, 
What do I not know? ¿Qué es lo que no sé? ¿Cuál es la respuesta? Lo que él hace. What he does. ¿Sí entendemos ahora? Do we understand now? Yes. Yes, teacher. Ok. I hope yes, everyone is understanding. Espero que sí todos, est todos estemos entendiendo, ok? That's the main goal today. Now, is now the function as direct object clear for the noun clause? Well, I hope so. Now, we're Teacher, going... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. In this case, the, well, well, in all the cases, I guess, mm -hmm. the noun clauses are just giving extra information, but we can work without them, right? Of course, yeah. For example, if you say, I do not know, but he always has the best time, it's like, I do not know why. It's like that extra information is still necessary. So we cannot okay. take it away. Yeah. Thank you. Now let's move on with this one. Function as indirect object. Now let's see. I will need Arturo, Arturo's help. Go ahead, please. Yeah. yeah. Function as direct object. Non classes can okay. also act as an indirect object of the verb in the independent clause. Excellent. For example, she chose to photograph. Chose. chose to photograph. Are, are you sure that we say chose? Choose. Mm -hmm. She chose to photograph. To photograph. To photograph whomever, whomever was willing to, to pose for her. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the non clause, whomever was willing to pose for her, is the indirect object, object of, of the same verb. Okay. He, here, we're going to have a little bit of change. Why? Because <clears throat> if you don't remember, to find an indirect object, para encontrar un objeto indirecto, aquí cambia un poquito la pregunta, porque ya no utilizamos what en who, sino que sí lo utilizamos, pero le agregamos algo. To what and to who. ¿Por qué? Porque queremos saber el objeto indirecto. Está funcionando eso como objeto indirecto. ¿Ok? Ahora, ¿Puede alguien decirme cuál sería la pregunta que yo utilizaría para saber en este caso, omitiendo que esto está subrayado? Pensando que esto no está subrayado, ¿cuál sería una pregunta que me daría esta respuesta? Piensen, think about it. And give me your options. Uh, the question will be who. Okay, so can you formulate the question? Uh, who, who, uh, who, she, who she chose uh, to photograph? Who? If we say who, we are saying direct object. We are not saying indirect object. But good try, good try. Thank you very much, Rafael. Any other volunteer or someone that would like to give an opinion? Try, guys. Try, even though it's not correct. Try. To who is going to be the photograph? Oh, say it again. To who is going to be or to who she is going to choose the, to photograph? <laughs> You're pretty close, pretty, pretty close, but the, the question is not grammatically correct because we don't have going to in here. So we have a verb in past. So pay attention to that and reformulate your question. You're pretty close. Another opinion? 
Uh, este, who is, who is to pose for the photo, photographer? Okay, good try. Good try, someone else. Try, guys. Even though it's not correct, just try. Me? Go ahead. Um, uh, who was choose to photograph? Okay, we're we're getting close. Thank you for, for your opinion, Wilbur. The last person. One last opinion. Why she chose the photograph? Okay, thank you for that opinion as well, but no. Remember, les dije, chicos, solo tenemos dos, dos WH questions que nos van a ayudar. ¿Cuáles son ellas? What and who? What and who? Now, para el objeto indirecto, le agregamos algo, un, uh, una preposition, y es to who, to what. Ahora, la respuesta o la pregunta sería, to, si yo hago la pregunta, vamos a ver, si yo hago la pregunta con to what, vamos a ver si eso me da una respuesta. To what, tengo el verbo en pasado, ¿cuál es el auxiliar para el verbo en pasado? Did. did, ahí estaba la respuesta. To what did she choose to photograph? To what? ¿Me da una respuesta a ese to what? ¿A qué? No, right. Entonces ahora voy a utilizar to who. To who did she choose to photograph? ¿A quién decidió ella fotografiar? Y aquí sí me da la respuesta y me dice a quien sea que estaba dispuesto a posar para ella. ¿Sí? Whomever was willing to pose for her. Si ¿Sí entendemos, chicos, o entendimos, did we understand? Teacher, the present of choose. A little teacher. Choose. The present of chose is choose. Ah, chose. Mm -hmm. Chose is the present. No. Choose. Mm -hmm. Choose is the present and chose the, the yeah, past. Yeah, the past. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So I hope it was clear the function as an uh, indirect object. Espero que hayamos entendido, chicos. Teacher, I hope so. Teacher, yeah. Teacher, could you write the sent the yeah, of course. The question, you mean? Please. Okay, let me write it down in here. It's to who did she to oh, sorry, photograph. Oh my God. It's not helping me this thing here. Photograph. Oh. Oh, uh, the question mark at the end, I cannot put it right now because I have the keyboard on Spanish, so I have to change it to English. But th this is pretty much. To who did she cho chose to photograph? You see? A quien eligió fotografía. And then the question mark at the end. Do you see it? Or can you see it? Yes, yes, teacher. Um, um, have a yes. question. What's your question? Um, and in this case, mm -hmm. uh, function as direct object. Mm -hmm. Um, we can use uh auxiliar in the past ever. Ever. Oh. What What do you mean? Uh, um, if um. If we can use uh, auxiliary in the past. But we already have the auxiliary in the past in here, which is did. Yes, and is and in and in the case of the other the other sentences. Oh remember that that is going to depend on the tense of the verb. If the verb is in present, what is the auxiliary for the present? 
do. do choose. Okay, if the, you know, that is going to depend on the tense. So if you have a different tense on the verb, of course, you will change it or you will use the auxiliary depending on the tense. Okay, okay. thanks for the information. Alrighty. Okay, so hope, hope this, is, this is clear so far. And unfortunately, guys, we won't be able to finish it all today. We still have uh, one more function, which is, um, you know, the function as a preposition, as an object of the preposition. But due to the time, we didn't even fill one hour. Did you fill one hour? All right. No. It was too quick. Nothing. Either it was too much of an information or I don't know, but I didn't even feel one hour. So um, with what we saw, any questions so far? Regrets? No. No. No questions at all? No questions. Mejor ni me hubiera metido a clase hoy, pero. Muy difícil. No, but that's... <laughs> okay, but I I hope you learned something or, or I mean that at least you were able to remember about the direct and indirect object that it's something that you saw before. But, um, well, I try to explain you the best possible hope you understood like 90% at least. So we're going to try to continue tomorrow uh, so we can finish this topic, which, which is very important for you to know. And uh, if there's any question or if you have guys, any situation going on with the platform or any exercise that you are not uh, or the platform is not letting you to complete, please reach out to me or let me know. So as Arturo did before, he sent a screenshot of the exercise that he couldn't or the platform didn't allow him to continue. So I will reach out to you later on, Arturo. If anyone else is having any situation with the platform so far, please let me know, okay? So just remember that at the end of the module, you have to have 80% at least okay no no really teacher i didn't have time because okay. i have a lot of work really i completely understand some of you are working during the day and that's you i know that's really hard like working and studying at the same time is not easy as it looks but believe me this is a uh, something that it will help you uh in the future and of course of course it's it's worth it okay so if there's no any other question so far so i will have to say goodbye hope you have a good night and see you guys all tomorrow at the same time okay have a good night okay good night bye bye see you tomorrow